I have seen that there was something that was happening in Innisfail, Alberta. I went for a ride on my Harley, I pulled up, and all of a sudden I was swarmed by about 200 Antifa all around me. I had no idea what was going on, no reason why. I just seen a few people that I knew, and I was kind of curious as to what happened. Next thing I know, I'm being doxxed. I'm being labeled a racist by these groups. I'm being threatened and given death threats. This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. And if you have been paying attention to the news coming in out of Alberta or even uh, the news uh, talking about Alberta, you've probably seen these stories of these anti-racist groups who are holding these rallies and these bad counter protesters who are showing up there to silence the poor little anti-racist demonstrators. Well, of course, this is the complete opposite of the actual truth. Another reason why you can't take anything from the MSM for their word for it. No, of course, the real fact of the matter is this so-called anti-racist group is really just Antifa, some of the most violent and fascist people I've ever come across. And the so-called counter-protesters or white supremacists are actually just a bunch of good guys who are trying to expose Antifa for who and what they really are. And one of those guys is joining me on the line today, Pat King. Pat, man, thank you so much for joining us here today on Press for Truth. I've been seeing your name a lot in the mainstream media lately, and it hasn't been painting a very good picture. So I want to give you the floor here to break down this smear campaign against you. Uh, but before we get into that, maybe you could talk a little bit about what's going on with this group Antifa in Alberta these days. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Dan. I uh, appreciate everything you do. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, what's going on here is we have a, we like to call it a traveling sideshow of protests that want to travel around to rural towns in Alberta. Small, little, hardworking, blue collar, agricultural communities. A lot of older demographic of people and these groups are traveling around praising systemic racism and that their communities have to get on board with it because it needs to be abolished. And as we know, these people are flying under the guise of peace and uh, peacefulness and uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, well, from what we've noticed and what we've watched in the States and how that's transpired, and well, that's kind of turned into a pretty ugly show. So under further investigation, as we went further into detail, we started to see we have community watchdogs that watch the Antifa pages. We have Antifa, Edmonton, Calgary, and Red Deer. And as we're watching these, they're calling for reinforcements. They're calling for troops, comrades. Uh, we need as many comrades to be at these events at all times. So when approached about this, um, I have seen that there was something that was happening in Innisfail, Alberta. I went for a ride on my Harley, I pulled up, and all of a sudden I was swarmed by about 200 Antifa all around me. I had no idea what was going on, no reason why. I just seen a few people that I knew and I was kind of curious as to what happened. Next thing I know, I'm being doxxed. I'm being labeled a racist by these groups. I'm being threatened and given death threats. So then I, I and I get um, into contact with one of the one of the uh, organizers by the name of Taylor McNally, and I've got all the evidence. She's inviting me to come and speak. Wants to hear my voice. Wants to hear this. Wants to hear that. And then I see them show up in Pinoca, Alberta, and I'm like, "What are you doing in Pinoca, Alberta? This is uh, kind of a little bit out of your territory." These groups are coming from Edmonton and Calgary. They have no part or no um, no contribution to these small communities. So then in, in, uh, in Pinoca, one of the gentlemen had held his sign out into the middle of traffic to stop traffic. And the truck struck his sign and hit him in the face. And he's saying that it was a, it was a blatant uh, racist motorist that tried to run him off the road. And we all said, well, the, we saw the videos. That's not what happened. And please tell the truth. They pursue an investigation with the RCMP. Open investigation. RCMP are doing their job trying to find out what the problem was. All of a sudden they're holding a press conference and Pinoca and I'm like, well, what the heck? So they're going to defund the police. They're going to do all this. The police, police are incompetent. They're not doing their job. So I decide as a citizen journalist to show up at the event, ask them, why am I, if you guys are so peaceful, why are these death threats I'm receiving? Why am I getting this? And I had all the proof. I approached them. They would not answer my questions. I asked the interviewers from City TV. I asked the interviewers from uh, CTV that were there to please 
let me ask my questions. And I have it all on video where I'm trying to ask my questions. When I say, why am I getting death threats? Why am I getting my children's lives being threatened? Why am I getting threatened that my teeth are going to get knocked out and I'm going to be sipping through a straw for the rest of my life from a peaceful group that's claiming peace and equality? For one, I wasn't equal. For two, there was nothing peaceful about it. And then when I get into it, uh, I show all my findings to the RCMP. They say I have grounds to file charges, but I'm not going to file charges because I figure we can get through this with peaceful rhetoric and we can hash this all out. So Taylor McNally reaches out and invites me to her events to come and talk to her events uh, and, and be that opposition side so they can get all understanding of all sides of the story. So I said, okay, I show up, I hear they're having an event in Red Deer. But then we see they're calling for at least a minimum of 60 Antifa security guards. They want Antifa there, Antifa specifically. And concerned citizens are reaching out to me. Are you really going to go to this? Have you seen what goes down in, in the States and all this? And are you really okay with this? I said, yeah, I've been invited to go. So I'm going to go. Um, in the meantime, with the call outs, I've, I've posted what their threats were on my Facebook page. And the one gentleman who made the, who actually made the direct threats to me, his father reached out to me and his father was there to be at this event, to approach his son with me and ask his son, why are you doing this? Well, we didn't even get in. We got as far as a shield wall with riot shields and they started to push back. Some, 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 some punches came out um, from one of the other gentlemen. It was not me. Um, when they reached out, they hit them. Uh, there's been charges filed. And actually, Dan, as of today, there is a video where uh, Taylor McNally struck and hit a elderly gentleman and hit his camera and smashed it in his face. This is their organizer, their head organizer, the lady that invited me to come. She has been officially charged as of today with assault, assault with intent and assault with uh, causing bodily harm. Or uh, sorry, assault with a weapon. So I get to this event and I'm slapped with a restraining order immediately. I get this restraining order. I'm like, what the hell? I got to stay within 100 meters away. Okay, whatever. I'll abide because I'm a peaceful, law-abiding citizen. I'll abide by this restraining order. So the event took place. There was a lot of chatter like Antifa does. A lot of dancing and a lot of cursing and a lot of spewing of, I, I like to call it spewing venom because these people they don't know or understand the word of respect or anything like that. So they try and spit in your face. They try and call you derogatory names. So the altercation transpired, but then all of a sudden you get Rachel Notley the next day, jump in on this bandwagon. Rachel Notley, if you're not familiar with, was our former premier, NDP premier of Alberta. Well, she's crawled herself from under the rock that she comes from hiding under and she's getting behind this. So we do some investigations. We find out that the NDP government has a possible tie to funding minority groups to cause a upheaval or some kind of disruption in, the, in, the, in these groups. Uh, and another one of her characters that she's aligned herself with is a lady by the name of Janice Irwin. Janice Irwin is an MLA out of Edmonton. Well, they hold this event. The Minister of Justice jumps on it, calls us a bunch of anti, uh, white supremacists and racists. Um, because we went to this event to try and create dialogue to, you know, wonder, understand why a peaceful group is threatening people. Well, we weren't able to, to accomplish that. So well, we're not interested in dialogue, as I'm sure you've come to realize at this point. That's, that's just not something they're, they're interested in, really. I mean, I, I'm sure you saw the similar things happening with me at that BLM rally in Antifa surrounding me when I said, Try to explain to me or, or show me one thing I've ever said that would make you think I am this thing, this white supremacist. They didn't have anything. They got nothing. Absolutely. And I'm seeing a similar Absolutely. thing, similar things with you. They, they, they got nothing. They got no response to that because there is nothing. Um, so it, it seems like th there's a lot of organization coming from this thing. It's not like as Biden just said in that uh, debate the other day that it's, it's just an idea. No, it just seems like thought, there's yeah. organization here, doesn't it? Well, it's absolutely organized, and we know this to be true uh, under the Antifa manifesto. And we've seen what they're what they're uh, what they do, and we have copies of these uh, documents that show us exactly how they do it. And if you watch it, it's to the letter. 
So with Janice Irwin, Janice Irwin owned a, a gym up in Edmonton uh, called Queer Flex. And it was known that she was training these Antifa people in this facility. So when I discovered that and I, un I unloaded that information onto the, onto the interwebs, I, I decided, okay, we're going to hold a barbecue to create community awareness in the community of with regards to these groups and who they are. And we invited the community out. It so happened that these people decided to piggyback my event and purchase a permit to have me pushed aside so I couldn't talk. And we still held our barbecue. But in the meantime, under the Minister of Justice and what he had said about us being uh, white supremacists and, and, and hate groups, we also have our own premier, Jason Kenney, calling us kooks. We are a bunch of kooks for standing up for our, our communities. So that was fine. What we did see though on Sunday, last Sunday that just passed, was helicopters. We had command units, 180 RCMP officers, a bunch of unmarked officers, GIS, which stands for General Investigation Services, a hate crimes unit out of Edmonton, a gang squad, and the riot armor, uh, armored uh, vehicles in my little town of Red Deer, Alberta. All for us crazy kooks, or what the uh, justice minister, the newly appointed justice minister said as a possible hate groups and white supremacists. Well, since that event, we have actually had global media retract those statements. We are not deemed a white supremacist. We are not just deemed a hate group. And then upon further findings, and I, I find out this morning that uh, they are being charged on that event, there was weapons confiscated. There was uh, an arrest that was made. Uh, the weapons that were confiscated was a five pound fire extinguisher and an ax handle that they used. They hold golf clubs on their signs. And we have it all documented. We had Rebel News was there. They documented it all as well. Well, the same thing is what we ran into when, when all of this transpired in Red Deer on September 20th. They were there with knives, knuckle dusters, baseball bats, a riot shields and uh, and uh, the five pound fire extinguisher and bear mace all ready to take on, take us on. So when we see weapons and other people see weapons, there's a there's a fight or flight instinct that kicks in. Mm -hmm. So these gentlemen decided, you know what, get the hell away from Pat King, myself, and one of the gentlemen pushed them. Now he's been charged, rightfully so, and I don't I don't agree with any violence at all. So rightfully so, but also what the mainstream left out was the fact and the video, I have the video, everybody's been showing the video, where Taylor McNally physically assaults an elderly gentleman. That never made the news. That's the part that the, left, that the uh, mainstream media left out. So yeah. now that she's been charged, where's the media? Why isn't the media retracting that and saying, hey, this, uh, this had occurred? I'll guarantee you on Sunday this week that just passed this Sunday, that it was about about a million dollars spent in, in Alberta taxpayers' dollars just in the amount of police presence that was there. Well, you know, another big part of this, a, a big part of the story, I think, is something you mentioned earlier is the fact that they've been caught in literal training programs. Can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? What type of training are we talking about here? Is this is this physical combat training or, or is this absolutely like yeah? So it's physical taekwondo, kickboxing. Um, um, ground and pound style MMA um, training. What they do is they go in and they they learn how to they learn how to fight. They learn how to you know grapple and everything and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's supposed to be a safe environment for a, a group of people that uh, are aren't, aren't very well accepted in the communities. Um, and, and understandable if this is what it is. I know that uh, here in myself, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what you register as. I don't care. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with being a good, decent, law-abiding citizen. And when you see these things occurring, well, if the police aren't going to do something, then it takes the responsibility of the community to inform the community of what's about to happen. So, yeah, and from what I gather, that has been your intention here. You're not trying to disrupt anything. You're simply trying to bring some information to the other side, which the mainstream is simply not presenting, right? 
and I've reached out to media. I've set a, a media, con I'd, uh, held a media conference with regards to this and the, and the, um, the practice of cancel culture and how this works when we decide we want to, we don't, we don't align with them. We may agree on some things, but we don't align with some of the things like normalizing pedophilia, uh, uh, changing the curriculum and education to make that acceptable. Uh, we're sorry. You can, you're not going to get us on that one. You never get us on that one. But if we don't agree with them, then they start doxing, they start threatening, they start, uh, they got a real good close tie with the media. So when they do these things, the media is right there. So they have a tight connection with the media somehow. And I'm going to have to say that it is with regards to the NDP government or political, um, what, do, what, do, what, do, what do I want to say? The NDP political party. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Sorry, that was hard to spit out. Um, political party anyways that um, are pushing these minority groups. Now further to go along with that, do you remember when we had the train blockades last year mm -hmm. and these groups were lighting up tires and trying to derail trains in Edmonton and further around the country? They also have ties with these gangs. We've been able to undercover, uncover some of the, the connections with these uh, native indigenous gangs. Well, I was able to interview the uh, Wet'suwet and First Nations hereditary chiefs to which I was able to have them openly admit that they do take NGOs or non-government um, organization fundings. So what they do is this goes and hides under the NDP, it's the NDP, but then the NDP uses Unifor, mm -hmm. and Unifor funds these groups to get these, these aggressors, provocateurs, agitators to go out. Well, once I unloaded that video and I showed that this was true, that the Wet'suwet and First Nations are taking NGOs, and they are taking money from Tides Foundation, um, the, the, tr the train blockades disappeared. All of a sudden they were lifted, oh geez, I had over 34,000 hits on that video. That's mm -hmm. not very many, but at the same time, it was pretty significant when you've seen the timing of it. Yeah. And ever since then, Unifor looks after our teachers unions. Well, I had made a video with regards to COVID-19 and my son coming home and he was upset because he was supposed to have time without his mask off with his mask off and when his teacher told him he took his mask off and his teacher said no 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 put your mask back on well my son said well hey it's time without a mask this is my time to take my mask off i'm taking my mask off and the teacher said no you're not i'm the teacher i make the rules you listen to me put your mask on he came home physically upset crying I did a live video with regards to how I felt about the education system not giving a fair shake at this. And I said, I don't care who you are, a teacher or a person on the street. It doesn't matter if you hurt my son or hurt my child, you deserve a knuckle sandwich. That's all I said. Now, in comes a call from the teachers union, which is run by Unifor, which is tied in with the NDP. And they called in and got me restrained from any interaction at my son's school so I'm not allowed to go to my kid's school I'm not allowed to participate in any family events I'm not allowed to participate in parent-teacher interviews I'm not allowed to participate in assemblies all because I had expressed something on my live feed and this is where it derives from so it's just been escalating and escalating they are targeting me 100 percent yeah as I, I say, it, say. You, you seem to be um, becoming a part of this cancel culture as they're trying to silence not just your voice but a lot of any voice that is going against the status quo is countering the leftist agenda and and the the current uh, uh, narrative under uh, the SJW Justin Trudeau. I mean, it's becoming blatantly clear to me uh, that the major tech companies, for example, have taken sides here and they're now uh, uh, teaming up with the mainstream media to convince people to be against guys like you and me. And uh, that's why we need to continue to expose this for what it is. Uh, Pat, so I'm sure you, you're not about to slow down. You're not going to oh, let God, no. scare the you. The best part about this is these guys think, oh, we're going to silence him up. We're going to call him a white supremacist. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, that just lights a fire under my arse even more because that just proves to me when you're hitting the nail on the head and you're, you're dotting your I's and crossing all your T's and you're making sure that you know what you're talking about and they're getting ra raging mad and attacking you and not just attacking you personally, but attacking your family. Mm -hmm. You know you're on to something. And I know I'm on to something. So the best thing they did is, one, 
they came after me, which proved that I was right. Two, they exposed themselves to who they really are when Rachel Notley aligns herself not even 24 hours later with these groups when nothing even happened. Now, here's the kicker. Three of the organizers that were involved with this aren't even part of the Red Deer community. They are from out of town. So mm -hmm. these groups, these three individuals that are getting all this play on the media, they don't even live here. Yeah. So, but their their voices and speaking of our for our community. Why don't you speak to the community media? Why don't you speak to the people who are in? You go on all our on our Red Deer News and Area and all that. People don't want this here. Yeah. And these things cost money to bring people in like this. Do you think it's literally coming from Unifor, Tides Foundation, George Soros, and the likes, uh, trickling down into uh, the the Canadian Antifa? Absolutely. But what I think is doing is they have these bigger minions that are taking the money and they are funneling it out or keeping it within themselves to pay for their venues and pay for their trips and pay for their gas and fuel and hotels that they're staying in. But these kids are virtue signaling. They are claiming 100% that they have something wrong with them and they're not being heard. Well, they haven't been hugged enough as children or they haven't been, you know, they didn't gain, gain enough participation medals in school. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you right now, it's, uh, we, we've, got the, we've got the money trail. We yeah. do have the money trail 100%. You cannot deny it. The government is denying it. The RCMP, the RCMP know this, but who operates the, the RCMP? Unifor. Who operates the police unions? Unifor. Who is in charge of the police services? The government. So once again, we're kind of up against a wall. Yeah. But at the same time, when we expose this stuff, um, people are seeing it for what it is. They are witnessing these things and calling it out. Uh, I do believe that we are successful and we were, we did win on Red Deer. We were able to get these people out of our community. Um, we were able to stop it, but they figured that they would throw a peace march. And if you watch any of the videos from this peace march to show that Red Deer doesn't want this systemic racism, they're screaming Black Lives Matter and there's no black people in the crowd. I'm sorry. It's, it's incredible how less how little minority is actually in this so we ask ourselves who's really driving this yeah yeah exactly i've seen similar things uh, around here in vancouver with the, the 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 majority of the black lives matter activists are mostly right. white females <laughs> to, yeah to a large and not not just white females they're 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 um that 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 punk culture mm -hmm. they're they're these these kids who just want to be accepted for something yeah, and, well, and I, I understand that, and everybody should be accepted, but you don't act like an anarchist and aggressive and violently to achieve a goal. You like Mahmoud Gandhi, or I think that's his name, Gandhi. He portrayed that you can do this peacefully without any kind of violence. Although violence did erupt in India when he did his thing, he did not become violent, yeah. and his message still got out there. What we're trying to do is attempt to inform our communities about the possibility of these happening and the indoctrination of your children. Mm -hmm. Be watchful of what your children are doing online. Be watchful of what kind of things they're partaking in. Engage them in these conversations. Ask them what they're learning in school again. Start getting involved in your kids' uh, daily educational routines because we do know that this takes place and follows into the education system. Mm -hmm. We know well, that these, this is being brought through through that. So we're just trying to inform our, our, our communities, but then we have these groups that virtue signal, claim us racist, claim us white supremacist, and well, here we are. Here we are today with myself being labeled a white supremacist, but upon all doing that, um, I've actually filed, I'm filing a class action lawsuit against the media for what they've done to me, to my family. They've made me a target. There's defamation of character. There's libel. And we also have global media retracting that statement, awesome. which is also a mission of, admission of guilt. Now awesome. we have one of your favorite members that are involved in this, Mr. Evan Belgord from Anti-Hate Canada, who is calling us every name in the book and saying that he's an advocate for all these groups. 
Now you're starting to make the web. You're starting to put the web together, how this all plays into place. We got them this time, Dan, and I think we really did win on this one. Well, that's great, man. I look forward to seeing how this one's come up, going to come about uh, because, I mean, the really interesting thing about this whole thing is that I, I think they have good intentions. I mean, nobody wants racism. We don't want fascism. We don't want no. racism. But a lot of them are, are looking to the wrong sources and the wrong places to solve these particular issues for them. They're looking to the government essentially half the time. Uh, yeah. uh, the exact same thing they seem to be against is what they want to come in and solve the problem for them. I, I think yeah. meanwhile, they have to realize it, it, it comes upon ourselves uh, to be able to work together, you know, uh, to, to bridge these differences. And they're certainly not even willing to have the debate. So I think you're, you're gonna simply win moving forward. But they are willing to have this debate. I've absolutely opened up the platform to have a round table and I've invited all media to bring in five of their representatives, five other representatives from another side, and let's get everybody's views on the ground. Let's see how everybody can fall into place. Um, I've offered to moderate this uh, event, and I've got a couple people invited and just having a hard time because these people are really hard to talk to. They don't wanna see it unless you say something. Um, but what I was gonna say too is uh, with regards to these guys, Without, with regards to these Black Lives Matter and anti-hate, we are seeing a funneling of these groups. So in the Wet'suwet'en, they were funneled from Michigan. They were brought up to uh, put the blockades up in the in the ter up in uh, Prince Rupert, uh, Kitimat area. They were they were sent and funneled in through outside groups. Now, why do you need those kind of people if you're stating that you're 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 a peaceful group and why, why bring in outside people? Why not use community members? So Yeah, well, I, 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 I think it's clear what their true intentions are, and it's coming from the top-down orders uh, to essentially um, uh, d d disrupt society. Again, it, their modus operandi is often order out of chaos. Chaos, they have yes. To cause enough of that uh, uh, suffering and pain and fighting in, in, in order to offer the solution, which is, look, can't we all just get along as one big happy family <laughs> under our umbrella, right? So, uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's my big thing is that's what I, I use all the time. They are trying to get order out of chaos because they'll create these situations and then play the victim and yeah. ask for defunding of police, yet be the first ones that call the police. You know, their ideas and uh, and everything is, is right out of whack. But what I was able to do was be interviewed by a CBC reporter, and I have it, it's on my YouTube page, and a CBC reporter openly admits that communism is okay. Who am I to openly say that communism isn't a good thing in Canada? And I said, wow. well, we're a democratic country. She says, well, we have a communist party. And I said, oh yeah. She says, that's completely legal. Who are you to say communism isn't legal? I said, well, look at how that turned out for Russia. Look how it turned out for China. Wow. I don't want that here. Unbelievable. And that's the mouthpiece for, 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 for the government here moving forward, for the liberals. Un, unreal. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, for, first of all, I, I want to encourage you to continue this, this uh, battle against Antifa and exposing them for who they truly are there in Alberta as they continue to try to disrupt things. Um, 100%. Where go? I know they're going to want to continue to follow you on this as it escalates. Um, so right. where's the best places to follow your, your work? So I'm, I'm on YouTube now. I'm trying to get my followers up over a thousand so I can start doing uh, uh, live feeds off it, but it's just Patrick King on YouTube. Then I have my platform, Educate, Don't Aggravate. That's my Facebook platform. And then my personal web, my personal page is Pat King on Facebook. I'm also Perfect. on Wim, I'm also on Wimkin as well. Um, that's the new platform I'm trying to slide over, but it's not very populated yet. Okay, awesome. Well, guys, uh, check the links in the description. Let's try to get them up to that thousand subscriber count so we can start live streaming and uh, pay attention moving forward, man, because uh, these are the guys who are on the good side. You know, when history looks back at all of this stuff, we're going to look back and, and say, hey, were you on the right side or were you on the wrong? And Pat King's on the good side. So once again, man, thanks, thanks so much sir. for joining us today. You keep up the great work, man. Thanks, Dan. We'll talk to you later. Actually, I'll see you next weekend. I'm flying in, uh, flying into Vancouver. Excellent, man. We a big rally there, so I'll be sure. taking part in that as well. Awesome. We'll see you. And if you, if you, people aren't aware of that, October 17th and the 18th at the Art Gallery in downtown Vancouver, starting at noon. Uh, Pat and myself are going to be there. We hope to see you there. 
Um, so yeah, man, uh, once again, keep up the great work and we'll talk to you uh, next week. Right on. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. Help fund this guy too. Great man. Keep up Press for Truth, man. We love you out here. Thank you, man. Peace. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.